Hello everybody, this is Jack Dennis and welcome to our fly fishing and tying channel. I hope you're all having a good start to the new year and out tying a lot of flies. Uh, we started uh, a couple weeks ago with our Jack Dennis and Friends fly tying session. Uh, our first one was with uh, Dave Allison and I'm going to be showing you some from the past. One of the things I've been involved with uh, my fly tying career is setting up fly tying theaters and been involved with the many conclaves that fly fishing groups and clubs have over the country. And they uh, really highlight tires that you may not have ever met. And one of the best ones is one in Idaho, both the Western Idaho Expo and the uh, Eastern Idaho Expo, which is in Idaho Falls. Uh, they've been doing these fly tying get togethers for a long time. We're talking over 30 years. So I want to do some highlights from some that I filmed in 2009 and 2010. And you will get a chance to meet some names you know, and some, maybe some names you didn't know. And one of the nice things about tying at these expos is all the uh, excitement and sounds of people going around telling lots and lots of fly fishing stories. Most of them may be exaggerated. But one of the nice things about the theater is you get a chance to listen to the tires talk about it, their experiences uh, and, and answer questions. I, I think you're going to enjoy them. Uh, we're going to start this uh, week with uh, uh, several. Uh, we'll try to give you the most information. And I know some of you are going to say, wow, you know, I don't know about the materials. Well, these are really uncut. So, you know, you do your best on figuring it out. But I think you're going to enjoy the interaction uh, with the crowd and with the tires. And really, uncut un and, I think, extremely fun. Let's get going. Our next tire is Bob Jacklin, and he is uh, a legend, a fly fishing legend and a legendary fly tire. His shop in West Yellowstone is known the world wide as one of the expert places to get information on fishing Montana and, of course, Yellowstone Park. You'll enjoy Bob's stories along with his tying, as he's one of the most entertaining fly fishing personalities you'll ever meet. And so it's on to Bob Jacklin, and I hope you get a chance to visit his shop in West Yellowstone or get one of his books if you're heading to Montana or fishing West Yellowstone. 85 hook again. It's a little heavier wire hook. I'm going to go ahead and use a 14. No, maybe i use a 12 because I can see it better and you can see it better. I'll use a 12. A couple of years, uh, last year, in June, I had an early guide trip, Yellowstone Park, and this gentleman called me up and he said, I'd like you to take out my daughter and her two friends one day and teach them how to fly fish, and we want you. And I said, okay, I could do that. Not knowing that these three girls were gorgeous, about 30 years old, one was a doctor and one was a wife of somebody and one was a daughter, and anyway, so I had a ball with these three good-looking girls all day long. We got all done the guy trip, and I dropped them off about 6 o'clock at night on the fire hole, and their husbands and dads were fishing. I had a good time. And on the way home to the store, I still had my waders on. I get all the way to uh, Eagle Bend, where that big eagle nest is, and I called the store on the cell phone. Nowadays, we got cell phones, see? What's going on in the store? Nothing. It's dead. I'm not coming in. I'm going fishing. So I parked there and went to the fire hole. I went to Madison, right near town. I waited out, and I think I was the first guy to fish that riffle that year. Well, I just waited out, and I used this fly. I took an 18-inch brown, one about 16, a couple white fish, and a couple small fish. I had a ball, and I caught fish for about an hour. And the sun just went past the mountaintop, and I couldn't buy another fish. I fished another hour and couldn't get nothing. But I caught a ball for about an hour on this fly. Just, you know, you just have to hit it right. We're going to put... A little bit of black egg sac. I'll get my black here. Same black beaver. 
We're going to put just a ball of black egg sac on this fly. I'm going to tie it quick for you. This is a rusty spinner. I also use this fly on trichos down to a size 18 and 20. So I just put a little bit of rusty, a little bit of black tail on it. That's, we got that. Now we're going to use elk mane. And it's very important, not elk hair. Elk mane. You can use moose mane too. I prefer elk. And notice the hair going up. So we're going to take a bunch, you know, remember a, a spinner has two and three tails, spinners. Well, I'm going to put about eight on there. But I'm going to put a little longer tail on it, tie it right in here, and that's my spinner tail. That's going to help float the fly. Okay, now we're going to put a parachute wing. I didn't see how Gretchen did her wing. I didn't came in after she put a wing on. But I have a way I'm doing it that I'm going to share with you that I learned from a young fly tire about 10 years ago at a conclave. And when I saw this way of putting a post on a wing, I thought on a hook, I thought to myself, why in the heck didn't I do that 40 years ago? We're going to get the thread right where I want it for my post. Instead of tying it on and lifting it up and going around like we all do, I'm going to tuck it underneath. Now I got double it, put a couple of wraps behind, bring a couple of wraps over the top, and when I get it secure, I want to do a several, like, like uh, Gretchen did, I want to do several wraps, several wraps on there. How come it won't work? Here we go. Trying to do it too quick. So, oh, several wraps around, nice and tight. There we go. That's got it now. Right around and form a little post right around. But see, there's no bulk on doing this now. Now I got my wing. That's all set. Now what we're going to do for a body is have a rusty body. Remember, the trout is underneath looking up at this fly. So we want a very, very, very thin, rusty body. We're not going to do any ribbing on this. We're just going to put a plain rusty body. My rusty spinner is made of dyed brown Australian opossum fur and red or orange-red mixture of rabbit. And you mix this together and you got a very thin body. So we're going to do that and we're going to put a hackle on and then we're going to be done. We've got somebody else come up here. Here we go. Remember, very thin. You don't want to build that body up. You want it so thin, that's all I could see. Okay, now I differ a little bit from what Gretchen did on putting a hackle on. I have a different theory how I want to do it. But she did a very nice job, too. Different way. I use the biggest hackle I can find on the side of a neck. I want this hackle to be oversized. She used the right amount of hackle and the right size. I'm going to use oversized, big. I'm also going to tie it in upside down. And here's my theory. Clean off the flu. Gretchen did something I won't do now, but, I, but I've done it. In a, I haven't done it, but I want to try it. I'm going to tie mine in on top. That's the way I normally do it, upside down. In other words, I got the concave side up, convex side underneath, upside down. I'm going to tie it in this way, right on the side. What Gretchen did is she lifted up and tied it underneath to whip it against the post. I like that. I'm going to try that when I get home. Now I got that in. When I wrap this around now, I'm going to wrap it down underneath like she did, but the hackle, instead of going down on the water, like, like Gretchen's normal way of doing it, mine's going to go upside down. So it's going to hit the water like this, and it's going to be a post in your hackle. It's going to be a cup and a saucer, and it's going to lay right in the water film like that. You watch what happens. This is a pretty neat thing. We're going to wrap it around, and remember that this is a spinner. This is not a mayfly. This is a spinner form of the mayfly. So you want a very, very wide wing, lots of big, wide hackle. And I'm going to tuck mine underneath a little different than Gretchen did. Tie it off there. About three good wraps, maybe four. Cut it off. I'm going to put a little more dubbing under there. You know why I'm putting a dubbing under there? To hide my mistakes. Put a little dubbing under there to hide all that thread up there. Just a little dubbing, make a head right here. All right, got it. Now I'm going to whip finish this. I'm not done with that fly yet. Now with this whip finish I do, all I got to do is just go underneath, tuck it under the eye, and whip it right to the eye right underneath. I don't have to touch the hackle or anything. That's there. Bring that up. Got it. Now here's the last thing I do on that fly. This is where, this is a spinner. Remember, this is not a mayfly. It's a spinner. I'm going to cut that wing down fairly short. Now I'm going to spread the wing apart. I saw a fly tire last January in Billings, Montana, of all places. Good fly tires from the club there. There's some really good people. I watched this one fly tire, and he was using 
some crazy glue for a parachute. And I never saw crazy glue before with a brush. That was in Billings. I went out and bought, I asked my wife, I think I bought five tubes of crazy glue that night in Billings. But you got crazy glue now in a brush. So I patted this wing down real tight. Now I'm going to drip the crazy glue on that. And that's going to soak down into my hackle. And when that dries, that's going to be a post. Now, here's the interesting thing I want to show you on this. Get another one of these. Remember, the trout see to fly from underneath. This is a spinner. With this white poly type stuff, Antron, you could see this 60 feet out. Not only that, we're going to hold it up to the camera here to see it. And I want to hold it upside down. That's what you see. That's what the trout's going to see. Right like that. That's what the trout's going to see. Looks like a spinner.